Good evening, everyone. Hope you're enjoying Retrothon. Welcome to Final Fantasy. Uh, we're going to be doing something very different tonight. Uh, if you've never seen a manipulation run of this game, uh, you're in for a real treat. Um, up until just a few months ago, it was believed, or we nobody had found a way, I should say, uh, to facilitate RNG manipulation in Final Fantasy in a way that would actually save time. There was a point where I realized that what we're about to do was possible, but I didn't think it could save time. And then F. Coughlin uh, started looking at it and uh, came to a realization which just never occurred to me, which was that if you kill off three of your characters and your remaining character gains four times as much experience as a result, you can gain the experience you need just in fighting everything on your way uh, to get, get the level required to, uh, to win the game, uh, essentially making a beeline straight to the end. Um, so, we've basically eliminated all grinding, there's no, uh, very little pacing back and forth except maybe to, uh, to kill a battle here and there. So let's see what this looks like. First of all, uh, we're gonna be using four fighters, and only one of them is gonna go through the entire game. Let me just make sure I put in the names I usually put in. These names don't mean anything, so don't worry about it. It doesn't actually matter what names you put in. But this guy, nope, is the one that's going to live through the entire run. So as I say, uh, <laughs> this, this is something that is just kind of a recent development. And uh, it really changed things, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's get it underway. Three, two, one, go. So despite the fact that we're only going to be using one fighter, we are going to buy four weapons. And this is mainly just so we can defeat uh, Garland faster. And then shortly after that, we'll be losing three characters. So all these manipulations are worked out in advance and uh, worked through meticulously throughout a speedrun. Uh, we're going to equip our weapons and armor right now. Equip all the rapiers, and then just one suit of armor on our hero. Now, the RNG is set to an initial value uh, every time you beat the game, and I beat the game last night, so uh, we are all set for a known encounter here. This encounter is going to be unique. Because we get a chance to strike first, I'm going to set something up that requires an audio cue, and if it works, we'll be able to resynchronize in the next round. So just give me a sec here. Hopefully that's good. So based on the uh, the frame at which we attack, I have to do a little bit of a manipulation here, dancing back and forth to resynchronize the frame that we want. And this allows us to kill the four imps in two rounds instead of having it take uh, five rounds. For the rest of the game, every single enemy we can only either fight or hold the B button to dance back and forth, and that's how we're going to manipulate the RNG. So we have to fight every enemy one at a time. Battle RNG, this works by the way, because battle RNG only cy cycles inside of battles. So what we did at the end of the last battle is we set up this battle so that we got that critical hit for 60 damage. And that's going to set us up for Garland. Uh, it is possible to beat Garland in one round. But we're going to do it in two, and that's to set up our next encounter. The next encounter can have up to nine enemies, and uh, it's a very rare result to get only one enemy in that encounter. So we're going to manipulate our way into that encounter by making this encounter last two rounds. So we're going to dance a little bit here. In Dragon Warrior, this is where we'd be saying, Command, Command, Command. So everyone reaches level 2 here, which is pretty standard. We move up and have a chat. I call her the Princess Teleporter. We still have to talk to both of these characters. The bridge opens up the rest of the game, and the Princess gives us the loot, which is necessary to reach the end of the game. 
And now we exit and move on. Normally at this point we would be taking an in-trip and buying some magic for our red mages, if we had red mages in our party. Whatever mages we might have. But now we get to skip that town encounter entirely and just keep walking. Uh, now, as many of you already know, uh, in Final Fantasy, when you encounter an enemy is determined entirely by a fixed algorithm. Uh, all, uh, all battles are basically have a set distance of steps between them. So our next battle, like the distances are all different, but our next battle is always going to be right here. And that garland manipulation allowed us to only have one Grimp in this battle, where normally we would have an average of about six and a half, maybe? Somewhere around there. Now the next battle, uh, the minimum you can encounter is just four wolves. So it's unfortunate, but we have to fight all four wolves one at a time, and that's just how it goes. This is how we get started. So when I first looked at manipulation, I manipulated my four characters all the way to Provoca, and I sort of gave up on it because I was like, this is going to take too long, there are too many enemies, you have to fight them all at once. But again, it was F. Coughlin who came up with the genius idea to kill off three characters. And that's what makes this possible. Alright, one more wolf to go. We're going to have three characters going into Provoca for the pirate battle, and then the pirates are going to finish off two more. So at the moment, these battles are kind of slow, but we're going to gain back a little time because we don't have to fight any ogres before we go into Provoca. So basically, that's going to put us on just about even pace. Here we do one little manipulation, and then I think it's our second attack that gets a critical hit here. Our hero attacks for 21, and then, there, yeah, there's the critical for 58. Normally we would go pace below Provoca for an ogre battle, either one or two ogres, but... With manipulation, there is never any extra grinding required. We go straight to the pirates and get it done. Two little manipulations here to get us started. And then a few of the pirates we're just going to be attacking directly. Uh, not man much manipulation is required for what is literally the weakest enemy in the game. So in round two we're just going to hold A, and everyone's going to attack the middle left pirate. If by everyone, I mean our two remaining characters. And now we only have one. So the reason this works is because holding the B button allows us to buffer into uh, the next round of combat, just like it does in Dragon Warrior. Um, unfortunately, scrolling through uh, different commands in the menu, like uh, item, drink, spell, uh, unfortunately, there's no way to buffer doing that, so we can only attack. We can't even run away from battles we don't want to fight. So in order to continue the manipulation chain, we have to fight every single enemy individually. That's not to say that this is the end of the manipulation road. Theoretically, someday we could find a way to put in risky Bane strats or something. Although, uh, I don't know how that would happen exactly because it takes extra time to pick up the Bane Sword, and then we would probably have to use it on at least two bosses to make it worth it. And it comes pretty late in the game. We have to do a bit of a longer manipulation on the last pirate to set up our next battle, because we want a chance to strike first. We want it to be only one shark. And there we go. So that's the longest battle in the game. We get our ship, and once again we get to skip yet another in-trip. We're just going to go straight over here. We have to buy a bit of a stronger weapon to carry us through uh, the next little section. 
And uh, over the next couple fights, you're going to see why this works so well. You're going to see uh, really quickly. Equip our short sword, and we're out of here. A little bit of a cozy walk. We can gather our thoughts, prepare ourselves for what lies ahead. As I say, next up is a shark, and it's going to be a two-round battle, but we get the chance to strike first, so he's not going to attack us. A little bit of a manipulation here to get a critical hit. That gets us started, and then in the next round, we finish it off. So from this one shark battle, our hero gains level 4, just like that. Already demonstrating the power of having only one character alive, gaining four times as much experience per battle. In this next battle, we're going to get two sharks instead of one, because that's the minimum. And we start off the same way. Now there's a miss in here, that's just part of the manipulation. Everything looks good so far. And look at that. On one more battle, we reach level 5. We have to do a little bit of pacing here, which I'm going to do carefully, and then... That pacing, by the way, allows us to skip over an encounter. The encounter rate in the water is lower than on land, and so we're basically skipping over a step that would have encountered uh, a battle on land. So that's the first in-trip that we actually have to take. And we need some armor. Armor is equipped. And it turns out it's actually faster by two steps to exit to the back to the right of town than it is to go up and left. That was I found that interesting. The next three battles are actually all going to be the same group. One ogre and one creep. This battle will always have one ogre, and can have as many as three creeps, and of course we only want there to be one creep each time. So that is part of the battle manipulation uh, from each one of the previous battles. We're setting it up so there's always one creep. Bring back Debt. <laughs> Yeah, no pure for the Marsh Cave, so that's a good point. We're also going to be manipulating to ensure that no one gets poisoned ever. And we also don't need to bring a bunch of heals in either. Because we're manipulating uh, how much damage we take as well. Three quick dances back and forth here. And we're ready to take out the creep. One more Ogre Creep battle coming up, and this one is actually only going to take two rounds. We're going to beat both enemies in one hit. Ogre goes down to critical, and then five here. One, two, three, four, five. Two Gerwolves coming up next, as we approach the Marsh Cave. Again, normally at this juncture we would be grinding just outside of Elfland, uh, the town where we just healed, uh, to reach level 5, but we're already at level 5. <laughs> In fact, we just reached level 6.
Now we get uh, two shadows here, and they're gonna strike first. Now we can manipulate those first strikes out, um, but shadows almost always strike first, and so the value, the RNG values where they don't strike first are kind of rare to come by, and sometimes they're just really far away. And it turns out sometimes it's faster to just let them strike first, because they don't really do any damage, they're pretty weak. And that's actually an idea I floated to F. Coughlin, and he ended up integrating it, it ended up working, and all is well. Three little dances here for the muck. And seven here. Three, four, five, six, seven. On to the next floor. Bit of a walk before the next battle. Let me just wait here for a second. Just make sure I don't make a mistake here. I don't think we have any step leeway here until we actually return to the top floor. So I want to make sure I don't make any errors. Gotta keep the manipulation chain going. This next manipulation is much longer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-three, and two more. There's our critical. Now we have to watch the position of the bat on the other side before we move. See, he's in the way of the door. If I had gone through, he wouldn't have gotten out of my way and the run would be over. So we have to be really careful there. And I'm just gonna take a moment here, make sure I do the right thing. Two little dances here. Two dances on the Arachnid. Command, command. Couldn't resist. And this is actually the last battle before the Wizards. But before we get there, we're going to be picking up uh, the house and iron armor in here. Now this manipulation is so good, we actually don't have to put the iron armor on here, which is kind of interesting. Get out of the way. Ready? Yes. So we've manipulated so that we get only two wizards. That's important. There can be as many as four. Three dances coming up. One, two, three. And then six for the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the first juncture where you really see how powerful this manipulation is. Normally we pick up the crown around the half hour mark, and we're not even 17 minutes in. We've reached level 7 where we'd normally be level 5, and there's the crown. Eleven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And ten for the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two gargoyles coming up next. Have to fight them both. There we go. And once we get the muck on the last step before the stairs, 
Now we have a little bit of leeway. This is a long manipulation, by the way. There we go. So the importance of accuracy here, you notice we get an enemy on the last step here before the stairs. What we're trying to do is avoid an encounter on this floor. In the previous routes, the longest battle in the entire game occurred on this floor, and basically uh, doing the manipulations we have to eliminate that battle uh, have allowed us to skip the longest battle in the game. So It's pretty significant, and again, that's all F. Coughlin. So now, instead of getting a mandatory crawl with the bones, we fight the bones up on this floor, and it's just bones. One more enemy before we leave, one more muck. Bones are pretty worthless, but the mucks actually have some value. Chance to strike first, manipulated in there. And we are out of the marsh cave with no pures, no heals. Coming up next is a geist. Right here. Now I discovered something interesting after this route was created. Uh, the next battle is on a zone border, and so we have to be very careful how we approach it. Go straight up from here, because the next step up is where the next zone is. So if I had gone one square less to the right, and instead gone one more square up, uh, that would have killed the chain. We would have gotten a different battle. Uh, that is the last battle before Astos in the Northwest Castle. So we're going in with very low HP right now. Uh, no magic. Astos is very resistant to attacks. This is uh, not normally how a speedrun would go. But we're doing it. Thank you for the good luck, Reigns. Here we only do 9 damage. This is just a little bit of opening manipulation to get us to favorable results. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One. We're going to do 6 again here, five, but uh, we're actually not in a loop. By the way, uh, the fact that slow 2 worked on us doesn't actually here. matter because but when we get yeah, criticals, that overrides uh, the, way, uh, the slow uh, the 2 fact effect. That slow 2 worked on us doesn't actually matter because when we get criticals, that overrides uh, the slow 2 effect. But anyway, there will be moments in the run, actually Lich is a really good example, where we will be looping the same result round after round. Um, loops in Final Fantasy are actually very common. They were known about well before manipulations happened. Uh, in grinds against Earths and Agamas, when we would just be holding the A button, we would very frequently see loops uh, for as long as no characters got a level. So when we're manipulating, uh, loops are really easy to find, and for a situation like Lich, where there are very few values that yield a high critical for us and a very low attack from Lich, uh, we want to find those loops and uh, keep them going. So you'll see that when we get to the Earth Fiend. Arachnid is next, starting with nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is a two-rounder to set up the next battle, make sure there are only two Grimps in the next battle. Hundred and fifty word essay, that's like a paragraph. That should be easy. Depending on the topic, I guess. Alright, so three dances against the first one. One, two, three. Nope, loves to dance, what can I say? We're down to 17 HP. 
But this is the last battle before our next in trip. Oh, it's an old Twitch theme. <laughs> well, how about that? All right, so we're gonna go stay at town and again uh, take an in trip. We need our HP back at this juncture. And this is the best time to do it because uh, we also want to come in. Whoops! Come in here and buy the silver sword. And there's also armor, right? Equip iron, drop chain, and we have the silver sword equipped. We're ready to go. Ogre here. Only one ogre, and we get the chance to strike first again. That's all manipulation. Next we're going up to Matoya's cave. And this route introduces something that we never used to do before. We're actually going to pick up the two heal potions that are in those treasure chests. <laughs> There's level 9 already. Normally we wouldn't be getting level 9 until, like, the ice cave. So we're getting quite powerful quite quickly. I'm sure Deb would love a silver sword. had to pause the stream. It was uh, out of the corner of my eye. I was seeing all the flashing. was getting a little distracting. We have a four wolf battle here again. Again, we just have to fight all four wolves. Adept. So yeah, we're not just getting the herb from Matoya. We're also going to be picking up these two heals. And I will explain why later. We didn't used to do this before. But it'll become clear later. For now, pick up the herb. And we're going to head right back down to Elfland to administer it to the prince and get our mystic key. Now this next battle I also have to be kind of careful. Uh, it's also zone dependent. Should go straight down from here and we should get three imps. Fantastic. I think I'm again right on the border of a zone so I just have to be careful how I approach it. And a little dance here to uh, manipulate our setup for the next battle. Because obviously we don't need a manipulation to take care of an imp. This battle is only one wolf. Those do exist. Uh, next battle is three Sahags in the water. We walk along the dock here. Um, those dock steps are safe. When you're walking along the dock, you cannot encounter an enemy. And when you step on a square where it's impossible to encounter an enemy, the step counter does not advance. So you will see us walking on those safe tiles as often as possible in this run, basically to reduce uh, the number of overall encounters throughout the run.
Back down to Elfland again, as I mentioned. And again, a little bit of extra pacing here. Uh, let me just make sure I'm going out the right place. Yes. That a little bit of extra pacing again allowed us to skip over an encounter. No business in town here. Again, in unmanipulated runs, we would be heading into town after picking up this key uh, for... I think we... I forget if there was an in trip, but... Uh, there's definitely some spells to pick up. Or one spell, something. Alright, so we have the Mystic Key, and we have a quick exit here. Enter and exit the town. You can't go through the top of a castle, which is why we have to do that. Right back to the ship, this time we're going to our hometown. The Mystic Key gives us access to the TNT which we're going to give away right away to open up the canal to the rest of the world. Straight up to the castle. And I think before we used to open five treasure chests here out of the six that are available. Now we're only going to open the TNT. Normally we'd be getting the TNT at about the... something like the... around the 45 minute mark. So once again, we're already way ahead. Off to the Dwarf Cave next. This uh, shark is going to be a two round battle. And I believe that has something to do with the Odd Eye that's in the next battle. Want to make sure we don't get stun locked or anything. Bit of a long sail here. We're going to have to pace uh, in the ship to get the odd eye. There he is. We just attack. And again, we're going to skip over an encounter uh, by taking another 11 steps here. There we are. Okay, uh, no encounter on the way to the cave, so we're in the clear here. And there's a lot of valuable treasure in here, including a house. Houses are very useful in speedrunning Final Fantasy. But F. Coughlin, the genius that he is in his tremendous pursuit to uh, shorten the run, figured out a way to do it without picking up any of the super valuable treasure. Some of it we used to sell off to buy better equipment. Uh, there was the house I mentioned as well. There was also a cabin in there that we used to use. None of it this time. We get an asp here. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And one more battle before we get back to the ship. Just a single arachnid. A little bit of a dance required here. And the next battle is, again, an Odd Eye. We're on our way to Melmond and then the Earth Cave. First thing we're going to do is uh, go in and uh, get some iron equipment.
Let's see, we're selling the wooden helmet, buying the iron helmet, and the iron gloves. Wooden helmet. Iron helmet. Iron gloves. Everything's equipped, and we move on. Again, that Odd Eye battle, the previous one, used to be very long to avoid this uh, Shadow First Strike. Uh, F. Coughlin, once again, made it much, much shorter and just accepted the First Strike. The net result is, of course, faster. This is the second last battle before the Earth Cave. Next one is a single ogre. One little dance. And we're on our way in. Nothing we have to do before I enter. Gonna encounter a bull on the top floor, and then we're gonna encounter a bull on the next floor and do the exact same two-round manipulation. The manipulations we do here actually cause us to end on the exact same starting value for the next battle as well. And so... Oh, it's actually not on the next floor, by the way. We gotta pace a little bit at the stairs down here uh, to make sure we get it here. And the reason we do this is because the battle on the next floor would have had more enemies and thus taken longer. Only 10 steps to do this, so not too bad. Coming up next is two werewolves on the next floor. Thank you for the good luck on the bats. Uh, so, <laughs> in speedrunning this game competitively, uh, the bats getting in your way are basically one of the largest determining factors uh, of your result. So we're going to be hoping that the bats essentially stay out of our way. Unfortunately, there's no way for us uh, known yet to manipulate bat RNG. Just have to deal with it. All right, a Groger coming up. Right here. Now, the Specter Geist battle in the Earth Cave is very common. Uh, there's basically no way to avoid encountering it a few times. Uh, that is what we're going to see here. Fortunately, instead of being nine enemies as it usually is, we got the minimum, only four. Now this last Geist is going to stun us, so we don't get to act in the second round. But here we're going to pop out of it and do nine dances. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And a bit of a longer manipulation to set up our next battle. battle consists of the uh, two of the boss bird from uh, Castle of Dragon who went unnamed. Whoops. Had to push that bat. Except apparently there wasn't room to uh, put in the full name. They only give us eight letters. 
same battle uh, is coming up next, by the way. Another two of them. Going around the bats. Yay, that one didn't get in our way. Nice long walk here between encounters. Right here is where we encounter these two. I would say yes, Raffinho. Yes. Uh oh. So the bats are in a little bit of a. Okay, we're good. We're good. If one of them gets into this hallway, it is. Well, basically, we have to wait from a distance for them to get out. Seven. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. We get stunned here and instantly cured, and then one, two. Critical hit. And the vampire is down. Before we pick up the ruby, we get ambushed by two werewolves. I don't want you guys to be scared by the fact that they're attacking first. And again, they have the power to poison. Manipulations ensure that that doesn't happen. Ruby we normally pick up around the one hour mark. Uh, next battle is again a Specter Geist battle. It's unfortunate, we, but we have to encounter it. The good news is instead of nine of them, we only have to encounter four. This bat's in our way. There we go. He went the nice way. That was so nice. He definitely fell in the night, the vampire. That's why he was out, because it was nighttime. On to the two boss birds again next. So battles in Final Fantasy, as uh, many of you already know, happen uh, in a specific order. Of course, what enemies you encounter uh, depends on what enemy zone you're in, like any RPG pretty much. But if you're in the same zone, you'll always get that same encounter in order uh, after the same number of steps. So sequentially, it's always been easy to route our way through Final Fantasy. Even before Manipulations, there have been some amazing routes that took all this into consideration, and great lengths were taken to basically ensure uh, the fastest possible journey. Hang on, what's next? Werewolves? Two werewolves. Perfect. That's the last battle on this floor. Well, for now, anyway. We are going to have to come back once we get uh, the rod. But for now, we're on a journey to pick up the rod. And to do that, we have to leave the cave entirely. This is something every Final Fantasy speedrun has to do. Level 11 already. Normally we wouldn't reach level 11 until we start the Agama Grind in the Fire Cave. So we're getting quite strong quite fast. All because our one character gets four times as much experience. Two 
two commands here. Command, command. And one to finish off the final arachnid and set up our next battle. Are you gonna get in the way? No, you're not. Cool. Uh, nothing on this floor. We're gonna take three steps into the next floor and fight a bull. Constantly hydrating in between battles. Always stay hydrated, folks. Three gargoyles, again, the minimum for this battle. Two quick dances for this one. And that's it for our first visit to the Earth Cave. Yeah, I always have a tall glass of water next to me when I'm speedrunning. Especially for streaming, because I'm constantly talking, and uh, <laughs> having water really helps with that. Next battle, once again, we're going to get three shadows and let them strike first, so that uh, this battle we just won uh, gets to be a little bit shorter. So they're going to strike first, we're going to attack the first one. Next battle we want to force outside of this cave, so we're just going to pace a little bit. And then we're on our way in. We got the ruby in the earth cave, which we're going to give to this guy so that we can pass. Titan. This is, they call this Titan's Tunnel. We got a tiger up here. I think this battle can have as many as three tigers. I, for, I don't remember for sure, but I think that's the case. But obviously the minimum is one, and that's what we've manipulated for. Next two battles are three shadows, and we are going to let them first strike. We don't let them first strike in every battle. Sometimes it just works out that uh, the value we're looking for where they don't first strike is uh, fairly close by and doesn't take too much time to reach. But not so here. Gradually inching our way towards the rod. We get our next encounter right in front of the entrance, right here. Now, a casual observer might be wondering around this point, like, th this really doesn't look quicker at this point, right? Like, doesn't it look like we're losing time having to single-handedly fight all these encounters we'd normally be running away from? 
Well, there's some truth to that. It takes some time to get through this section. But when we get to skip the Agama grind, which takes upwards of, I don't know, somewhere around 20 minutes, uh, all the other grinding in the opening of the game, a number of other things we get to skip, it's all gonna work out. This is where we get the rod, which is basically just a crowbar to remove a stone plate to uh, the rest of the Earth Cave. No, can't see the rod. But we like to imagine that it's inanimate and composed primarily of carbon. Two ghouls coming up next. We got a nice long walk before we encounter them. <laughs> you guys are wonderful with the puns. I would expect nothing less. Again, four Gerwolves the minimum for this battle. But we get a chance to strike first. And then in the second round, we attack before this Gerwolf can attack. Or do we? I forget, do we? Do we... No, we don't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say it's essentially two Gerwolves, but I guess it's essentially three. That's the last encounter in Titan's Tunnel for this run. Next battle is also four Gerwolves. No way around this. Again, we're already kneeling down. We're going to spend a lot of time in this run being on low HP relatively and kneeling down as a result. This Gerwolf takes two rounds, and that is just to set up the next encounter more favorably. Next encounter is two ghouls. I remember this encounter being a bit of a mess before. I think we got stunned in two different rounds. Level 12 already, which again, we normally get as part of the Agama grind in the fire cave. Last encounter before the Earth Cave is once again three shadows that f uh, strike first. I promise there will be some Agamas, RCT. I won't leave you in suspense, there are three Agamas in this route. So we use the house. Uh, because we're not refilling magic, we don't actually have to save, so I skipped over the little save animation there. Or text. So yeah, it's a little slow having to fight stuff, everything in and around the Earth Cave, but once we get out of here, things are going to take off, like our airship.
Let's see if this bat, yep, this bat got in our way. We have to push the bat out of our way. Four arachnids here. And again, these guys have poison, so we have to manipulate our way around all of those possibilities. Eyes are actually worth a lot of experience. Uh, it makes sense to grind on them, but of course it is risky. Uh, so that's the last battle on this floor. Let's move on to the next once the battle allows us to. Once again, the first encounter on this floor, two specters and two geists. We're going to start off with seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next manipulation is longer. I assume this is just to avoid a bunch of, like, a pocket of unlucky uh, stuns. We just have to skip past them all. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and one. Moving on, we get two more wizards in the next battle. The wizards are super dangerous, even now in the Earth Cave, they're still dangerous in uh, unmanipulated runs. Not as dangerous, but if they get a critical hit on your, uh, say, your black mage if you're using one, uh, that can just end the run right there. So we have a bit of a wall of bats here to navigate around. Next is a Groger. Gotta take two rounds against this guy. But we only take one damage. Oh! Okay, he misses. Nice long walk until the next encounter. There aren't many more uh, in the Earth Cave, despite the fact that we're not technically close to Lich yet. Bats are more out of the way this time. It's nice to see. That's actually the last encounter on this floor. It's time to use the rod. Next we get a troll. It's a two-rounder, but we get a chance to strike first so we don't take any damage. One, two, three. Gotta make sure we go the right way in this, uh, on this floor. It's a bit of a maze. All right, two more of these guys.
Last battle on this floor is once again two specters and two geists. Alright, Spectres and Geists are down. There is now only one more battle before the Earth Fiend. And we're coming in with one character who is currently at 86 HP. It looks absurd. But what will look more absurd is how we defeat Lich. Less manipulation required with four arachnids than there is with the ghoul geists. And that's just because the, uh, or sorry, specter geists. It's because the geists are so likely to stun. I think it's something like a two-thirds stun rate somewhere around there. Alright, so 82 HP. Let's go fight Lich! Oh, and by the way, we've already reached level 13, which is approaching the tail end of the Agama grind normally. Bit of a longer manipulation to start. There we go. And look at this, we get a critical for 105 and only take 3. Lich has 400 HP, so we would need 4 of those criticals to win. And we get a critical of 105, and we only take 3. Once again, we dance six times, and we get a critical for 105, and only take three. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the Lich goes down. So as I say, normally we would have just picked up the ruby, but we're all, we've already lit up the orb, and we're on our way out. As promised, things are really going to start taking off here. The beginning and the Earth Cave is basically uh, the longest uh, sections of this route. How much HP do we have? 61? Should be fine. Let's keep going. We're off to Crescent Lake next. Gotta fight four girl wolves first. All good. And that's the last battle before the ship. We can't get Lich to run. <laughs> We're not, uh... We don't have a white mage to cast fear. Got a shark right away. Chance to strike first. Manipulation still required. We want to make sure the next battle is a Kizoku. It can be one to five, and of course we want to make sure there's only one.
go. Four extra steps there again to skip over an encounter. We got a peed here. I don't know why, but for some reason, I find it neat that in this route we have to fight a peed and a gurpeed. No idea why. But they just happen to fit into the route. That's what we're kind of stuck with. Uh, we get one more troll before entering Crescent Lake, and that's where we're going to get our canoe, which gives us access to the ice cave and the fire cave if we want to go that way. But of course, we don't want to spend time canoeing to the fire cave if we don't have to. Really impeding our progress. <laughs> Only by a small amount of time. It's all good. So we're in Crescent Lake. Once again, we need to get our HP back, so we're going to take a quick in trip. We're going to replace our iron shield gloves and helmet with silver shield gloves and helmet. set. Let's equip. Everything's silver. Well, except for the armor. We don't need uh, silver armor here because we're going to be getting uh, ice armor shortly in the ice cave. And uh, we don't take enough damage to warrant having to buy uh, the silver armor. So there you have it. We pick up the canoe. Picking up the canoe before we would normally uh, be fighting Witch. Let's take our quick exit here. Again, I mentioned uh, whenever you travel on a safe square on which you can't encounter an enemy, uh, the enemy step counter does not increment, and essentially, the more you can do that, the less, uh, the fewer encounters you'll get throughout the course of the route. When you enter or exit the canoe, that step also counts as a step you cannot encounter an enemy. So we do a lot of those in and out of canoe transitions, uh, almost whenever possible. And I think we're going, yeah, we're going straight to the ice cave. Seems crazy, normally this would take a lot more prep. Uh, but to be fair, even in no manipulate RNG manipulation, um, the ice cave is a run killer, it's very dangerous, even with all the scary enemies routed out. Um, fortunately, in RNG manipulated runs, we are afforded the luxury of being able to fight harder enemies, because we can make sure that, for example, things like sorcerers don't ever give us the death touch or anything like that. And I believe we do fight a sorcerer in this ice cave, and I also believe he won't be the last sorcerer that we fight in this run. Two Grebes here. Creeps is also going to be our next battle. And this is the final battle before the ice cave. We're going to start off the ice cave with wizards. Uh, every, I think every speedrun route I've ever seen encounters wizards in the first floor of the ice cave. It just, the, I guess they're really common up there.
Minimum is three. But of course, with the silver sword, and I think we're at level 13 right now, wizards are not an issue. They can still get scary critical hits, but of course we won't allow that to happen. Two birdies and a mummy coming up next. This battle can be a lot bigger. Um, this is another one of those where it takes a bit of manipulation to get this result where we only encounter three enemies in this battle. And of course, they, the birdies can turn us to stone. So we have to make sure that doesn't happen. On to the next floor. This is where the wraiths start coming. Wraiths are a little bit of a wild card in uh, No Manip Runs. If you get like five of them, they can be a little bit dangerous. But they're not always. So uh, typically there are quite a few wraith groups and you just hope for the best. Wraiths are certainly not the most dangerous part of the ice cave. They're just kind of up there. Two images coming up next. Let's keep it moving. One quick dance here, and then we attack. go. Oh, here's a sorcerer. A longer manipulation required to stay safe. And this isn't even a one-rounder. Is, however the only encounter on this floor. Now people who uh, have played this game a lot will remember uh, the forced encounter on the next floor on the very first step which very often yields nine enemies. Well guess what <laughs> once again there is a value where there's only one enemy in this battle and we manipulate our way into it. Coming up next, there's a forced frost giant, uh, sorry, frost dragon tile right here, and that is guarding the ice armor. And so this is the reason we didn't have to buy the silver armor. The eye is coming up soon, absolutely. Ice armor is equipped. And here is a Gurpede. We fought the Peed, now we're fighting the Gurpede. Oh, guess what? The next battle's another sorcerer. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the sorcerer goes down. Last battle on this floor. 
Uh, we, in the previous route, by the way, we used to go to the lower left room there and uh, pick up a bunch of gold to afford uh, a number of things, including the pro ring. But in this route, it turns out we actually don't need the pro ring anymore, so we need far less uh, money. We still need some, though. We'll be picking up a treasure chest in the next room. Fairly significant treasure chest. I think it's 7,300. Oh, it's 9,500. How about that? Okay, that's all we need to do here. Here's the eye. Now, the, uh, the right chest up there in that previous room did have the ice shield. But the ice shield is no longer required, and so we just skip it entirely. Even though it's right there. It's definitely nice to only have to equip one character, that's, that's true. We have the floater. Now we have to take that, uh, that forced tile again. And for whatever reason, uh, I guess the value where there was only one enemy was too far away. So this time we actually have to fight three. But it doesn't take too long. Already at level 16. Normally the Agama grind stops at level 15. Uh, we're going to here. And guess what? There is actually a second Gurpeed in this route. One Peed, two Gurpeeds. And despite the fact that we have to traverse another floor, there is only one more encounter in the ice cave, and we're actually going to encounter it on this floor. Longer manipulation here. That's it. On our way out of the ice cave. Let's go. One single Geist in this battle. We'll take him out right away. Always very important uh, when doing a run like this that I know what I have to do in the next battle. So as I'm performing man uh, manipulations, I'm constantly looking ahead at uh, what is required coming up. Next is a Hydra. Two dances here. One, two.
and the final battle of the canoe is two Kareeves. Back to the ship. Now something interesting happens here. This was another fairly recent development. Um, we have the floater. We can get the airship. But we're actually going to save that for later. So we're going to go straight past. straight to our deals. And the reason this is possible is because we don't need an in-trip in the middle. Even in previous manipulation routes, uh, we used to uh, take an in-trip in between, but we don't have to anymore. Two extra steps here, and then we do this. And no more encounters before the castle. Into the castle of ordeals. Killer of many runs in the past. There used to be worries about man cats, medusas, all sorts of nasty things. But thanks to the power of RNG manipulation, we will be dodging all of the worst values that exist. So yes, you guys are correct, that, that is essentially exactly what is going on. Um, the problem is, it takes a lot of looking up and checking to uh, find the best results. Um, obviously anyone could make their own uh, manipulation run. The problem is making it this fast, and uh, F. Coughlin has come a long way in that regard. I've like I've lost track of how many routes he's created. Every time shaving off a little bit of time. Exactly, he made a program to do it, and that's a thing I wanted to talk about as well. Normally, wow, level 17 already. Um when I was manipulating Dragon Warrior, I, it was a point of pride that I always created my own manipulations. Um, but for this game, in order to uh, produce optimal results, it would take it would, me, it would basically take me months to do what F. Coughlin can do in a day now. The first route he created, by the way, took more than a month. Uh, it was a very arduous process, lots of analysis. But uh, his program is amazing, and he can do anything with it. So we get the ice sword here. And that's the only sword we need. Actually, I think this next treasure chest is the one that has 7,300 in it. We used to not get this chest, but F. Coughlin realized we could sacrifice two extra steps to pick it up. 7,340 to be precise. Three dances. One, two, three. And then two in the next round. And of course we've manipulated so that we only get one zombie D. I know there can be a second. I forget if there can also be a third. I usually get two when I encounter that battle.
And that is the Castle of Ordeals. Let's move on. It's time to finally pick up our airship, and we can do a bunch of things all at once, including our class change. Here we're going to skip the uh, canoe skips. There we go. Six dances here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The reason we skip those uh, canoe transitions is because we actually have to do a little pacing before we get the airship uh, to eliminate an encounter. So we might as well lose a couple more steps uh, beforehand. Odd Eye coming up next. Oh yeah, he runs away. I forgot about that. So we take four extra steps there. All right, that's it. It is time to finally pick up our airship. to about here, fly due east, there's our landing spot. Alright, I'm going to take this opportunity through the long hallways to uh, talk about how manipulation actually works. When you hold the B button, um, every time you dance, the first dance skips one frame, the second frame, uh, second dance skips five frames, and then all subsequent dances during a B hold, uh, skip three frames. So it goes one, five, three, 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 three. So if we want to uh, hit any of those earlier frames, for whatever reason, if you change the direction you're holding on the D-pad while you're holding the B button for the next dance, it will only advance one frame no matter what. So if we want any of, like, uh, frame number two or three or four or five, we can get there uh, by changing the direction on our D-pad. So we have uh, long manipulations and quick manipulations, whatever you want to call them. Behold! <laughs> Alright, my shoulders look broad. I'm pretty sure I did the class change. Let's go get the bottle. So much money. And now that we have the bottle, we actually return to that town we just flew over. Uh, we need to have the bottle uh, to take care of business here. And we also need the class change before we do all our subsequent stuff, so everything's taken care of. We're gonna take an in trip to refill our health. And again, here we used to do some shopping. Uh, I think we had to sell something and then buy the pro ring in the armor shop. We don't have to do that anymore. We just go straight up and continue on. As a kid, I didn't know you could open that anywhere in the town. But uh, I've, I've seen speedrunners do it so many times, like way before they actually arrive at the lake up here. So I finally started doing it early, like everybody else. We have a little chat here. Now, before we continue, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of encounter skipping again. So we land here.
exactly how long it is. Now it's three Sahags, but this battle is only two rounds, and the reason is because one of them runs away. We have to take two more steps in the ship, and then we're off. So one, two... And we're basically going right back to where we were. There's the desert, the oasis where we bought the bottle, but we're going down here. Again, you can see this river is a little jagged. There are opportunities to take safe steps by transitioning in and out of the canoe. Uh, but once again, we have to kill an extra encounter uh, up north. And so uh, we can kill a few extra steps along the way by not doing that. So before we go into the Sea Shrine, uh, we want to clear out the waterfall. So just three extra steps here. Presumably, whatever the next battle would have been inside would have had more than one enemy. So we're just fighting it outside instead. In we go. Even in the waterfall, there are bats who want to get in our way. A lot of mud galls in here. Very common enemy in the waterfall. There actually isn't a very large enemy pool in this place. There's level 18. This one's actually two rounds. Long manipulation here. I don't see the bat. Now, let me just make sure I'm ready. Okay. Now, 
I think the robot is right above us, so we can just talk to him right away. There you go. I also want the ribbon. Now I have to go down here, and then over to defense. We only equip defense, not the ribbon. Right? Let's just make sure. We got the ribbon, we equip defense, that should be it. Look at that lovely orange gold tint on that sword. Just exudes power. So beautiful. from out of bounds bat on top of that roof below us. One thing I've often wondered about is, is there anything inside these buildings? Obviously there's no way to access them, but you gotta wonder, did they program something in that they might have intended to use at some point and just left it there? That's something I'd like to find out someday. Yep, the ribbon is our helmet, uh, but not yet. We're going to be wearing the opal helmet soon. Weren't too bad. We're going right. Oh, hey, this is actually the last encounter in here. Excellent. Yeah, the defense sword is uh, one of the four strongest swords in the game, so it's very, very good at this point. got it before defeating three of the fiends. last encounter before the inn, so it doesn't matter how much damage we take, and as a result you're going to see something scary from the very powerful Frost Gator. Oof! It burns! Except it doesn't, because it's a Frost Gator, and he didn't use the spell, he attacked. But you know what I mean. Into town we go. Now here, we would normally go up into the potion shop here and buy a number of houses for the endgame, as well as some heal potions. We no longer have to do that. Uh, the ending is going to get a little crazy in that regard. You'll see what happens. For now, we're going to focus on the Sea Shrine. Now, in a world record attempt, we would be very worried about Cope getting in our way here. Unfortunately, he's up there, he's not in our way at all. That NPC up there is named Cope. And if he's in the way at the bottom, it's a total run killer in terms of, you know, world record pace type thing. First, we take an extra step to get an encounter on this floor.
two sea slugs. This way, and down. Next enemy is a water. And the next floor does not have any enemy encounters. All the tiles are safe. So it's a nice break. We have to uh, pick up some treasure. Plenty of time to do so. We're going to start with the opal shield, excuse me, which is way off in a corner here. They're kind of emphasizing the fact that it's one of the most valuable uh, pieces of equipment that's in here. So we've got to take a long walk for it. Gonna get two more pieces of opal equipment and of course the slab. We're in the final hour of our estimate and we've still only beaten one fiend. That gives you some idea of how fast the rest is gonna go. Three fiends to go as well as chaos of course and everything in between. And there's the slab. I'm just gonna double check, I'm getting paranoid. Everything looks good, let's go. Okay. Ghosts are one of the strongest enemies in the game, and certainly in the Sea Shrine. Normally, we would want to route them out, but of course, again, uh, manipulation affords us the luxury of just taking them out quickly. So we don't have to avoid them, and there's level 20 already. One last encounter on this floor, it's two sea snakes. Counters on this floor. We're gonna get a lobster on the next floor. Good time for a sip of water there. battle is also one lobster. <clears throat> Here we don't want to step in front of the door. For whatever reason, the square in front of any door in this game is actually a safe square. You can't encounter an enemy on it. I don't know why. 
but that's the reason that we uh, very typically, almost always, walk past doors on purpose. Encounter here. Yeah, in the uh, in the Japanese version of uh, Final Fantasy, there is a stairs glitch run, but I think it's something like seventy two. Dances here. One, two. Yeah, I think it's um I think it's either seventy two or seventy three stairs. This is a very recent development, Shiner. Um, this was... Nobody could uh, find a way to make this possible um, for a very long time in a manner that saved time. Finally, F. Coughlin took the initiative and cracked the code, figured it out, figured out a way to make this faster. The key ingredient is using only one character. The game's experience four times as fast. And of course, we also use manipulation to make sure that we have as few enemies as possible. But we have to fight every enemy we see. That doesn't run away from us, of course. <laughs> there aren't many that run away. There's only one more encounter before Kraken. single lobster, which I guess is just a warm-up before Kraken. Kraken is one of the dangerous fiends. Uh, when he attacks, he does severe damage and up to eight hits. But he also has two very safe abilities. Ink and Lit 2. So we're going to be seeing a lot of those. There's Ink. And it's interesting, because ink only uh, produces the darkness effect. Which doesn't actually do anything in this game. Kraken. We have defeated two fiends, and we've reached level 21. Zany. We don't even have to heal up yet. Normally we'd be using a house or two here. skips. And we're back to the airship. 
We got the slab, so we need to head over to Melmond. We are above Melmond, above. This is where we will take our in trip. <laughs> now we're at uh, above 500 HP. It's quite something. And we gotta talk to this guy. Oops. If we had a, ma a white mage, we'd be casting, uh, or sorry, if, hang on. I should stop thinking about things that we don't have. We'd be casting warp to leave is what I was going to be saying. Uh, where are we going? That should be good. I have to go get the chime now. Skips there. Zombo coming up next. Zombles are an enemy we can't run away from anyway, so we would be fighting these regardless. Even in an unmanipulated run. Four frost wolves coming up next. We got the first strike. And then in the next round, we attack first, so it's technically only like two frost wolves. Sort of. Two giants before we reach the town. Okay. Let's go get the chime and proceed straight to the Mirage Tower. Oh, he actually got in our way. That doesn't happen often. Now there's a quick exit over here. We don't have to walk all the way back to where we were. And this guy is not blocking it, so we're good. Zombo. Four Frost Rolls coming up next, once again. Next battle is going to be on the other side of the mountains to the west. <laughs> it's actually one step out of the airship. 
six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're getting there, guys. Two fiends to go. Level 22. No more enemies before the tower, by the way. Two vampires coming up next. Oh, I never thought of that, Shiner. Checksums, of course. No wonder you always get a different password every single time you talk to the guru. That makes perfect sense. I never even thought about it that way, but of course that's true. Same with uh, Metroid, probably. That being said, I've certainly seen patterns in the passwords, but uh, yeah, you can get many different passwords by repeatedly talking to the guru, and they'll all do the same thing. Up next, we're getting the dragon armor, which is extraordinarily strong. So we definitely don't want to skip it. This is routed into every speedrun. Ice armor, dragon armor. There we go. Ribbon is there. Everything's equipped. And that is all we have to do here. Let's go. Two vampires coming up again. Oh, wow, that was a longer walk than I expected. Oh yeah, that's pretty common for NES games, Shiner, for sure. For example, I know for a fact that Dragon Warrior 2 has one of those, um, and I don't even know if it's actually used for anything, or if it is, I don't know what it's used for. I just know that it's counting, doing laps all day, frame by frame. Alright, the blue dragon is up next. It's going to be a two-round battle. Starting with two dances, or commands. Command, command. And then three. Command, command, command. And we're on our way up to the Sky Castle. Oh right, there's level 23. So to give you uh, guys uh, some basis of measure, of comparison, um, in a non-manipulated run, we normally fight Chaos around level 17, sometimes 18. We're already far past that. And that's what makes this run possible. Yes, you saw that right, by the way. The uh, evil man did cast Exfer, and it did work. Thank you. 
Side note, I love when Shiner talks about Faxanadu, I always learn something. Let's pick up the Adamants. The Mass Moon is a little bit out of the way in terms of walking, and so we won't be picking it up, but thankfully with manipulation, uh, Excalibur is more than strong enough to get the job done. So that's all we need. By the way, we actually get to fight another eye in this run. And it's right here. One, two. On to the next floor. We won't encounter anything on this floor. It's a very short floor. Um, if you go in other directions, there is a lot of treasure you can pick up, but we don't need any of it. So we're just going in a beeline towards the end of the game. Sentry takes two rounds, two dances here. One, two. Sword, we are strong enough to handle them. In single round bursts. Very important that before we go to the next floor, I take two extra steps. Level 24 we have reached already. So I'm just gonna go up here and one, two. I think the encounter rate on this floor works a little bit differently than normal, and I think that has that's the reason we take those extra two steps. That's definitely what I perceived as a kid. Um, I think this is the only floor in the game, other than floors with uh, guaranteed encounters, where you can encounter two enemies two steps apart. That's a thing that can happen on this floor. much HP left. We're about to fight Tiamat. It's crazy. Oh, by the way, another sorcerer coming up in this battle. It's time. We're still not going to use the ribbon. HP. Lost half of it. And we win. Fantastic. Let's get out of here. Three fiends down. Crescent Lake first, which is right here. And that's all we're doing here. Again, not buying any heal potions. And we're doing the volcano next. 
do have Adamant. We could have gotten Excalibur. And we used to before, before uh, entering the volcano. But because it's so close by and we don't actually need it, we're going to do the volcano first without the sword. Tiles are also safe squares, that's the reason we step on as many as we can, essentially. Uh, I can go here, and then just want to make sure we do what's most efficient here. So we walk all the way down, and then here. And again. Step on as many lava tiles as possible. No encounters possible in these squares. We're gonna get an enemy here, aren't we? No, not yet. Oh, yeah, it's down here. That's right. That's right. I did it last time. And I think there's a margin of error of zero at this point. A walk to uh, carry. But we made it. I think there's going to be an encounter one step after this battle. That is it for the fiends, guys. All that remains is chaos. town once again. Elf trying to block me from staying at the end. And again, normally in these speedruns we'd be buying 99 heal potions right now. We still haven't bought a single one yet. So finally we're going to get Excalibur, we're going to equip it right away, and we're also going to finally put on the ribbon for the Temple of Fiends. Excalibur... Ribbon... Everything looks good... Let's go... Just one sec... Let's go. Oh, there it is.
Shauna Berry Blast, thank you so much for raiding. Much appreciated. Congratulations, well done on your runs in Retrothon. I was watching earlier today. It's been a fantastic day, really. There's level 25. No encounter to the next floor. This is a longer manipulation. Thank you for the good luck, Shauna. Whoops. <laughs> I was like, what happened? <laughs> I was holding the A button. Five bad men. This is an unusual battle. Normally we would have skipped this, but uh, again, it just worked out that uh, this is a necessary part of the route. We don't want to spend any more time uh, encountering extra battles to make the battle smaller. Because pretty much everything in the Temple of Fiends has a few enemies, and uh, we also don't want to take too much damage. Remember, we didn't buy any heal potions. All we have right now is two heal potions from Latoya. I think I only have to burn one step. Not always easy to burn one step, but when we have a door, we can step in front of the door. And that allows us to take two steps to burn only one. Phantom time. This is a two-rounder. And this is the part where we have to use the loot. Moving on. Next is Zombie Ds. I think there are two of them. But it's going to be a three-round battle. On to the next floor. Oh, level 26. We're so strong. It's a beautiful thing. Same thing here, three frost dragons, but we get uh, first strike, and then we hit one of the remaining two before he can act, so it's essentially only one frost dragon. Alright, it's time to go to the earth floor, we're very close to the end here. So Shiner, one interesting thing about this is sometimes you have to hold a direction on the D-pad in addition to the B button, and when you have to do that multiple times in a row, you have to alternate directions on the D-pad. This allows you to advance a different quantity of frames, so the inputting is still very precise. It's not just holding the B button. But yeah, it's a really interesting process. Thank you. 
two dances coming up next. There are the scary glances, which we're presumably blocking with our ribbon, which is why we're wearing it in this section. <laughs> Just like playing Beat Mania. So this is the last game of a very long NES block today, uh, and the first game of a little bit of an RPG block. Coming up next after this will be Dragon Warrior 2, the Game Boy Color version run by Some Diner. Alright, it's time for Lich 2. Starting with 3, 1, Two, three. Next round is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And of course, manipulation here avoids the dreaded nuke spell, which would cost us way too much of our HP. Alright, for those who have been patiently waiting for a gammas, now is your big moment. They are still in this run. <laughs> Level 27. And just in case that wasn't enough for you, we're going to give you one more bonus again in the next battle. That's it for the ribbon, we're gonna go back to the opal helmet now. Use our two heals. Okay. Oops. Armor. Back to the opal helmet. I think everything's set. Let's go. Very important, we take two extra steps for this encounter here. Got to encounter this before carry. One more step to encounter carry two, right here. One, two, and one, two. This is another two round battle, because we're so strong. And we've got Excalibur. One, Two and one, two. Same manipulation here, different result. We get the job done. Kraken 2 coming up next. battle before Kraken 2, and this battle does contain five enemies. One 
didn't see Snake remaining. And it's time for Kraken 2. Kraken 2 is down, on our way to the second last floor. And of course here is where, whoops, hang on. This is the floor where the Masmion is, but it's too far of a walk, too many, we'd have to uh, encounter too many enemies. You're gonna see, uh, this floor is gonna be very short without that walk. Time for Tiamat 2, and he's not even the last battle on this floor. level 28 for the final battle. There's a significant uh, gain at level 29, which is why uh, the first route actually beat the game at level 29, which led to uh, my largest contribution to this route. Um, I recognized that if we skip this worm battle at the end, this was the battle that brought us to level 29 back then. Um, if I skip this battle and was able to beat Chaos at level 28, it would be a lot faster. So I routed out my own Chaos battle by brute force, without a computer program or anything. And according to F. Coughlin, the battle I routed out was so good, he couldn't find a better one, and we still use the same battle to this day. So this is my largest contribution right here. First manipulation is the longest, just to set it up. Next round is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, I wanted to make this as few rounds as possible and take as little damage as possible so I wouldn't have to waste any time healing. And apparently I did a very good job because we didn't have to buy any heals. We only got two heals from Natoya. Also one really neat thing about this battle is it does exactly 2,000 damage to Chaos. And as if that weren't cool enough, F. Coughlin routed it so that we're down to exactly 1 HP. Here comes the last attack, guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... And time. 2.25. So that is what Final Fantasy RNG manipulation looks like. Um, the fastest unmanipulated route is about 25 minutes longer, so we save a very significant amount of time by doing this. 
Thank you all so much for the GGs. I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, I want to take a moment and thank my wonderful friends at RGL. Um, this run is what you think it is. If you make one mistake in any part of the run, the run is dead and there's no way to recover. And I was working without a safety net. Uh, in other words, when I choose to run this game in a marathon, I'm basically staking my reputation every time. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank my friends at RGL who trusted me enough to do what was best for the marathon. I promise you guys, I would never let you down. So here is fully manipulated Final Fantasy. Um, thank you so much for letting me do this. Uh, today has been an absolute pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know there are uh, some people who don't enjoy runs like this because they sort of take the Final Fantasy out of Final Fantasy, but for those of you who primarily love seeing, uh, you know, whatever is the most optimal in terms of time only. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I certainly enjoyed playing it through. Um, also, uh, we're 15 minutes ahead of estimate. Um, this is another good time to thank all the amazing runners who have been so consistent and, uh, and ultimately kept us ahead of estimate uh, time after time. We actually just added in a new run, Ninja Gaiden 2, right before my Final Fantasy run. And that filled some of the time. And now I guess we have another uh, extra 10 or 15 minutes to work with. This went very smoothly. Um, there were certainly moments when I was nervous. Um, if you go through a run this long, sooner or later, there's going to be a moment where you question if you actually did the right input. And uh, I can definitely remember times when I had that thought process more than once. But uh, we did everything right. And it's very nice. Uh, the world record is uh, less than two minutes faster than this time that we got. Um, all the delay was basically from me just standing still and taking a moment to think and make sure we did everything right. And that's a good point. Uh, F. Coughlin, uh, who, again, he routed this entire route from start to finish. Many routes uh, came before it, all created by him. Um, he and I have exchanged the world, uh, world record a couple times. He is a phenomenal mind and a great runner of this game. That definitely uh, deserves to be said. Alright, so I will leave it up to the organizers at this point. There's about another minute or so in the credits, but I'm sure everyone wants to keep things moving, especially when it's late at night, and there may be advantages to uh, gaining a little bit of time as well. So I will pass it off to some Diener. Thank you all so much for watching, and enjoy the continuation of Retrothon and this RPG block. Stay tuned and take care.